Now, as most of you know, there's one console that Nintendo made which is so special that I still use it to this very day, the Game Boy. And on this magnificent handheld, they released a lot of classic games, and one of those was the Super Mario Land series. Games that were made to work on the new handheld and its later versions. However, it wasn't limited in any way because of this. Some of the most well-known enemies, locations and characters were seen for the very first time in these quite different Mario games. Because believe me, they weren't your standard run-of-the-mill Mario titles. Oh no. Because the developers had some interesting ideas with these games. So today we will find out how they evolved in terms of use, story, design and gameplay. Now all of this started with Super Mario Land, a game that was originally released as a launch title for the Game Boy in 1989. The game was developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and the team was actually led by Game Boy inventor Gunpai Yokoi instead of Shigeru Miyamoto, being the first in the series to be made without him. Now this new development team used elements new and inconsistent with the series as Super Mario Land shrunk elements of the series to fit the portable device's small screen. And thanks to this and the fact that Miyamoto was involved, they were able to create completely new things, stuff that wasn't traditionally Mario. For example, new locations, a completely new villain, and even a new character you were supposed to save from this new evil. They even added certain gameplay elements that were completely new, like auto-scrolling sections that were similar to arcade shooters. So they certainly did some interesting things in this first title. And initially, it was set to be a pack-in game for the Game Boy. However, later on, Tetris took this spot since it would have a wider appeal. Well, according to some people. Now the game takes place in Sarasa Land rather than a Mushroom Kingdom and you're there to rescue Princess Daisy. But an evil alien named Tatanga being the main villain instead of Bowser. And most enemies in the game were not related to any creatures found in earlier Mario titles. The game even featured a whole lineup of unique bosses as well as region specific enemies. Which is really cool to be honest, I love stuff like that. They did the exact same thing when it comes to bosses in New Super Mario Bros, and it was a great move from Nintendo there as well. In general, it was a breath of fresh air for the series, since the games that came before all had the same themes and ideas for the most part. However, critics saw Super Mario Land as a smaller and shorter version of Super Mario Bros, which is quite weird to me. If you compare the two games, you can clearly see that Super Mario Land has completely different themes and even gameplay elements that were never seen in Super Mario Bros. So I think calling it a shorter and smaller version of the first game isn't really doing it justice. It's so much more than that. However, Mario's weird handheld console adventures didn't end there, because they made a new Super Mario Land game with the title Six Golden Coins. It's a sequel to Super Mario Land and also marks the debut of Mario's self-proclaimed arch-rival Wario. And he would do some terrible things down the line. But we will get back to that later. Now this game was notable for being the last side-scrolling Mario game until 2006's New Super Mario Bros which was 13 and a half years later. So did it leave a good impression and was it original in any way? Well, yes, it actually did a lot of cool things. And to be honest, it's my favorite 2D Mario of all time. It was again developed by Gunpai Yokoi and his team, being made in only a year. According to an interview from the game's official strategy guide, the development team wanted the game not to feel bound by the conventions of the previous games. They were striving to make it feel unique compared to the previous Mario titles, which the first one already succeeded in. But this attitude was toned down slightly after the first draft. They concluded that what they were making didn't feel much like a Super Mario title anymore. So they wanted to make the game closer in design to Super Mario World. However, it's still not the same in any way, because even the overall story is incredibly different. This time you want to reclaim ownership of Mario's castle. This was intended to be a change in routine from other Super Mario games by having him pursue something for his own benefit instead of helping someone else. 
And so, Wario was also born, being an evil version of Mario. That's also why their names are so similar. His name came from the word Wario, which is bad in Japanese. And he was also created by R&D1 out of the disdain they felt towards having to work on a game starring a character that they didn't create. So in general, the development of this game was quite interesting. But in the end, it was really special. Now the objective of this game is still the same. Reach the end of the level and don't meet your end when you're going there. And of course, the Goombas and Koopas are seen in the game as well. But they also introduced several new ones, however not as many as in the last one. However, they also did some other things. For example, coins are not accumulated to automatically grant extra lives. Instead, you play games in a special area that awards lives and other power-ups. Another thing it did was introduce an overworld map, where you're no longer restricted to moving only right in a stage, and you have a lot of different options when it comes to choosing a world you want to play, or which way you're going in a specific level. And all those worlds also have unique themes, like an underwater zone, space zone, and even the zone where you're tiny and need to go through a house. There's a lot of diversity in this game. Every world feels completely different to the last, which wasn't the case with Super Mario Land. There you just went through a lot of similar areas, most likely because they were limited by the early Game Boy tech and cartridge sizes. And down the road they got more breathing room, and that's why this game also looks a lot better and features more content in the end. So it was a true step up from the previous game. However after this, everything was going to change. And that's all because of one man, Wario. Because after your battle with him, where he uses all kinds of power-ups, he flees. But he still wants a castle. So in order to get one, he decided to completely hijack the Super Mario Land series. Because while the first two Super Mario Land games star Mario, the third one didn't. Instead, it stars Mario's rival, Wario. With the game being called Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land. Now in this game, he wants to replace or restore the castle he lost to his rival in the second game. So he sets out to steal a golden statue of Princess Toadstool from the Brown Sugar Pirates and Captain Syrup, which he then intends to ransom for the money he needs to buy his own castle. Clearly a bit of a weird plot, but apparently it intrigued the developers enough to build an entire game around it. And so it introduced a lot of weird new mechanics and characters that were never seen before in the Mario franchise. One great example of this is that the ending is determined by the amount of coins that you collect. The more coins coins and treasures you have, the better his new home will be. And we even saw a mechanic similar to this in another game later on, New Super Mario Bros 2. However, more changed in this game. There's a completely new character that you play as after all, and he's more into brute force than Mario ever was. Now the game is divided into seven worlds, with each of them having multiple levels. And when you want to enter one of them, you almost always have to trade in 10 coins to get one golden coin to open the door to the next coin course, which was completely new for the Super Mario series, but it does fit with the entire treasure theme. And when taking on foes in those levels, you can actually notice a couple of differences. Wario can actually touch enemies, as long as they don't have any hazards equipped. And so he can do a couple of things, like stunning or defeating them by performing a body slam, ground pound, or tossing them at others. As you can notice, this new main character has completely new abilities to take out any foes that are in his way clearly being more rough with them than Mario ever was. However, he can also use power-ups, just like he did in his boss fight in Super Mario Land 2. But in this game, they introduced a couple of new ones. For example, Jet Wario, who can sort of fly, Bull Wario that has an amazing charge, and Dragon Wario who can breathe fire. But when you're hit, you lose the power-up and can even get small like Mario does in almost all 2D games. So this new title brought a lot of cool new things to the table and also expanded on a lot of older mechanics like the multiple route choices in levels, while still being some sort of familiar to fans of the series. But it wasn't like Super Mario Land 1 or 2 anymore. Wario had fully hijacked it and this wasn't going to change. You're now a bad guy that bashes and forces his way past or through any obstacle, 
and people seemed to like it. So Nintendo continued with this idea, and completely abandoned what the Super Mario Land series used to be, making the second game in the series in 1998 and many more afterwards. This series truly went from a new interesting Mario adventure with different villains, to the most popular villain taking over and starting his own series, while leaving the one that created him in the dust. To be honest, it was really weird that this even happened, although I have to admit that they kind of did the same with Yoshi. He was originally seen in Super Mario World as a companion, and so many people liked him that they gave him his own series, the Yoshi Island games. And while I do miss the Super Mario Land titles, I could never say anything negative about the first Wario Land game. Because my lord I enjoyed it as a kid, and hopefully they will bring back the old Super Mario Land series one day. Because while it did change a lot, the first two games still did amazing things.